quick video here to talk about sharing state in React. And I'll illustrate this with a specific problem that I recently solved in a customer relationship management platform, a CRM. So in this platform, you have contacts. Contacts will have phone numbers and physical addresses and email addresses, the people that you wanna contact, right, for your outreach. What happens if people upload a bunch of duplicates? We want to be able to detect duplicates and merge them. Merging duplicates is a great example of when we would want to share state. Why do we wanna share state in this case? Imagine that I have that page where I can see the list of duplicate contacts. I wanna be able to click a pair and get to a different view, which is a merge duplicate contacts view. This view has a different concern, but I wanna recycle some of that same data. So I wanna pass that data over. Passing data over is not the same as passing state over. I don't wanna throw it over the fence and then disconnect. I wanna maintain a connection, and here's the reason. This is why it's unique to merging contacts. The user should have the ability to click on, let's say phone number from contact A, email address from contact B, so they can pick these bits of data from each contact. That selection lives in the parent component, but I wanna pass it down to the child so I wanna maintain a live connection so that they can click it at any time and it will be passed in. So we're sharing state at that point. There are a lot of ways to do this in React. Use state, user reducer, or context are all built into modern React with hooks. Then there are some strange sort of exotic ways you could do with like next static props. So you could actually pre-compile the Cartesian product of every two contacts. We don't wanna do that, that's really weird, but there are some additional built-ins like the static props that you could do with the frameworks that are common over and above React itself. And then there are the state management libraries as well. So there's even more ways to do it. Keep it simple. That's the first thing you wanna do. If a built-in React first way works, you should use it. And in this case, a built-in React way does work. So let's focus on those three built-ins. Use state, use reducer and use context. Which tool should we reach for and when? And then which will apply to this case? We're gonna be helped out by a few architectural principles. Don't repeat yourself, dry, the rule of three, and the concept of tight and loose coupling. In general, we want to not repeat ourselves. And this is severely indicated once you've repeated yourself three or more times. Two is kind of okay. You wanna look at the actual effort and do a pragmatic return on investment to your effort. If you only repeat yourself twice, that can be fine. You can repeat yourself. This is sometimes called you cry. You can repeat yourself. The opposite of don't repeat yourself. And how do you navigate between those? You need to actually run the numbers, the return on investment. The rule of three says that typically three or more times you're going to want to dry it up. And with tight and loose coupling, we typically opt for loose coupling. Loose coupling makes things easier to maintain and update over time. But there is an exception if you want to break something on purpose so that if component A changes, you want to break component B, or you want to break your build, or you want to throw an error so that you are quickly and easily alerted, ideally before deploying to production. And that is the case for proper tight coupling. We think about reducers as middleware. So if you want to extract that repeated logic, you can put it in a reducer. We think about context as a data tree root. So it's not as good for extracting logic, it's better for extracting reusable data particularly when you have a bunch of components that have a common ancestor. A great example of this would be a theme. So passing around theme variables, maybe you want light mode, dark mode, that's great for use context. Use state is typically for local component state. And there is one exception, which is if you have proper tight coupling with a one-step drill, you can use a state prop. In modern React, this is pretty much the only time that you wanna use a state prop. You can also use a state prop as a development tool for a work in progress. Implementing a reducer, implementing context might take you a while. So you can temporarily do a state prop and then clean it up at the end of your pull request or whatever, clean it up later. So these are your three cases when you want to use state for local state or for a state prop that only goes one level deep or for a whip commit. In our case, with the merging contacts, we are going one level deep. Context and reducers solve a problem called prop drilling, where you have to go through multiple levels. Prop drilling is not a big issue if you're only going one step. So our case here is unique. We will actually reach for use state and the merge contacts page. So you'll view the duplicates and that duplicate information, which is in the parent, will be passed one step into the merge form. The user will be able to click each piece of data in the parent component, and it will just get passed in one step only to the properly tightly coupled child. 
they're properly tightly coupled because they're both related to this contact schema. So that if the contact schema and the parent breaks, I actually want to break the child. They should always move in lockstep. They should be following the same data shape, the same schema, because they're both dealing with the same entity, the same model. That is the contact model. So that's called proper tight coupling. And that is pretty unusual. Let's wrap up and test understanding by trying to picture a scenario that's slightly changed where I would reach for context or a reducer. So one way would be if the merge contact view were far away, if, we're, if it were on a different page that was not a descendant component in the rendering tree, then I would probably reach for a reducer. Or in that case, I might even do something more exotic like server side props, static props, and so on, if it was on a different page. I might use context if there was a hierarchical relation. And that could be that the merge view is down the tree, but it's not a child. It's like a grandchild or a great grandchild and so on. Or if it was up the tree so that there's a hierarchical relation where they have a common ancestor higher up. So an example of this might be picture a page where the duplicates are listed down in one section and there's a merge form that's actually above that section, not inside of it. So the user would, in this case, go down to the bottom and maybe check a few contacts. The data would go up and then down the tree to kind of like a sibling, but they have a hierarchical ancestor, which is the page itself. In that case, I would consider using context on the whole page. This is an advanced topic, not a big deal if you didn't understand it. Um, if you did understand it and if you have feedback, we'd love to hear it. If you're interested in coding, follow the page and hope to see you soon.